no, re really excited to be here. Uh, first SEC Media Day. Um, this, this is an unbelievable venue. And just uh, been involved with this conference as a player and a coach now for 18 years, and just excited to be be part of this conference. And uh, it's, it's it's been a lot of fun to represent your alma mater at such a great event. Go over here to the left hey, on the back. How are you? Hey, how are you? Um, I know the journey, but I'd love if you would tell everybody else in this room what it was like um, being an Ole Miss man, having your family be an Ole Miss family, being raised and, and rooted in that, and, and having the opportunity be thrust on you and then, not, and then getting the job permanently. Walk us through that, please, to this whole journey, because it's, it's pretty magnificent, if you will. No, it is. I think very few people in life have the opportunity to really live their dream. Uh, from the time I was very young, having my dad's helmet right above the TV, the Ole Miss helmet, and, uh, and, and coming and wearing my brother's jersey in the Grove, watching him be the starting quarterback on the football team, and, and have the opportunity to run out on Vault hemingway uh, Stadium and be a player. And, and then when you become a coach, I think your next dream is to become the head coach and to have the ability for that dream to come true. And all the while, be able to do that um, my, my wife is from there in Oxford, and her, her family's been able to see it, and then my mom and dad are right there. So it's, it's, it's been obviously a, a great journey, but to be able to celebrate it with your family. Um, my sister is a lawyer that graduated from Ole Miss, and she's only two hours away. Uh, her, her son is with my son right now at baseball camp <laughs> in Oxford. Uh, and then obviously having my brother on staff. It's, a, it, it's been a very, very special time. We'll go standing over here on the right side. Two questions. Uh, first, about two kids from Alabama, Kevontae Ruggs and Ja'Cory Hawkins. What did you like from them coming out of high school, and what do you like so far? You know what, when I, uh, I was talking to all the coaches at the Mississippi-Alabama All-Star game, they kept talking about how physical Kevontae was. And I think he can play a, multi, a multitude of different positions, whether it's outside linebacker, inside linebacker, rush defensive end. He could even play. He's, just, he's a hybrid guy. He can do a lot of different things. And then Ja'Cory has come in and done really, really well. He's a very athletic guy. Guy. We are um, looking for really good things out of him at corner. And then what sold you on hiring John Sumrall to be the linebackers coach? You know, that, that, was, a, um, that was an easy decision for me because uh, we, we went way back. We, had, we have a lot of um, connections in, in the coaching circle, and I always had a lot of respect for him. He's been a coordinator, um, tremendous linebacker coach, and uh, he, he did a really, really good job for us uh, this spring. Go down here on the front on the left. Matt, before last season, were you approached by South Carolina about their offensive line job? Uh, I was. What made you decide to stay at Ole Miss? Well, I think just the, um, uh, you know, Kurt Roper was there at the time, was a very, very close friend of mine. We worked together for, you know, 10 years. So we, we had some conversation. But, uh, you know, just the ability to – it's hard for me because of all the ties, and and, and Ole Miss is it, it's it's part of who I am, and uh, just just really thrilled. Obviously, my wife being from there, it, it was a uh, always be tough to leave. We'll go to the camera position back here on the right side. Coach, this uh, being your first SEC Media Days, what's the overall experience been like so far? I know it's I know it's just began, but uh, right. what's it been like? Uh, I've enjoyed it. I, I think that's been the um, the. You know, when you ask everybody when you're coming to your first one, like, well, you know, give me some advice. I, but, but I think the best advice that, that I got from the, from the time that I was the interim was, hey, Matt, go be yourself and enjoy it. And th this is really fun for me. And, and to, to represent your university uh, in the best conference in college football, it's, it's been a lot of fun. And this, this venue, I, I don't have anything to compare it to, but, but very, very impressive. We'll go front row to the left. Uh, Matt, the, the timing was obviously a little different for you, but how would you describe the challenge of being a first-year head coach and that, you know, that, just that entire experience? I, I think the, the biggest thing for me was trying to draw from all the experiences I took from all the other great head coaches I've been around. Um, you know, a little bit from Philip Fulmer, some from David Cutcliffe, and, and, and just, just pulling from the best of everybody that you've been around, some from Tommy Tuberville from when I was a player, and then you put your own flavor with it. And I, and I think uh, even though that was my first year, Again, I've been involved with this league for a long, long time and, and been preparing for this job. And then you couple that with the fact that my knowledge of, of Ole Miss and me being around there, I think it made a good fit in, in, in preparation. We'll go standing back here on the right. Hey, Coach Andy Lee, WTVA in Tupelo. The, uh, the appeal will be the final chapter of this NCAA saga. How does it feel to come to a media days, <laughs> enter a season, and just not worry about any of that, just talk football? No, it's good. It's good. I, I'm really um, – very pleased with the culture of this football team. I think finishing last year with a lot of really positive momentum, 
which springboarded into a top 25 recruiting class and a productive spring. Just, just really focusing on continue to build that culture and, and work on being better. I, I think having continuity, um, offense and defensive coordinators is huge, and really just focusing on football. It's been a lot of fun. Second row over here to the left. Uh, having uh, you know Metcalf and Lodge, you guys were able to run AJ Brown out of the slot a lot last year. Is that a function of having the other two, or is that more by design? And then also, just what makes AJ Brown beyond that such a nightmare to cover? Yeah, I, I think it's a. Uh, you, you always want to try to find a way to get your best players on the field together, and I think that was the best combination of those three guys. Uh, I think they are a one of the most talented units in the country. Um, they're all very different. They all bring something different to the table, uh, but they can't, you can't double cover all of them. And I think that's when we really got um, good offensively last year was when we were able to run the ball effectively and then take, take advantage of those one-on-one -on -one mismatches. But, uh, you know, A.J. is a special player. He's very driven. Um, but, it, you know, what? it's fun to watch those guys because they push each other. They're very, very competitive, and they, and they push each other. But the thing that I'm probably most proud of is when one of them catches a touchdown, the other two are right behind them, and they're very, very unselfish because they all want the ball. And uh, for them to be unselfish, uh, I, think, uh, I think it shows that's a really special room. Go to the camera position in the top right. Hey, Matt, two questions. First, the past couple of months, having that interim tag removed, for you personally, how much more comfortable are you going into the season, experiencing a spring, going through a summer, now you have a year almost under your belt for yeah. getting into this year. You know what, I think, I think the experience is awesome. I, you know, I approached the interim job uh, and I made decisions for the long term. So I went in there preparing and, and felt like I had been preparing for this job for my entire life. So I tried to make decisions for the long term. Um, but, you know, having that year under your belt, certainly this job doesn't come with a handbook and, and, the, and the pressures and the rigors of a Southeastern Conference schedule. So having a year under my belt will definitely help, especially with time management. That was my biggest um, probably challenge was how to manage your time between the offense, the defense, the media, the recruiting, uh, you know, but uh, having a year under my belt will certainly help. Second question, um, you've been on both sides of the ball in college football, especially in this conference. Just your opinion, what kind of impact do you believe, you know, sports gambling will have on college football? Do you, like, have, is that something – You've talked about it all or thought about? You know, I think, I think uh, we're just coming into that. I don't think anybody really knows, but I think the biggest thing for me, if it does come to fruition, is just it's education. It's no different than social media or, or different challenges that they, that they face, that the student athletes face. I think it's just education and educating those guys on, on, on it just gives you one more topic that you have to cover. But I, I think it's maybe a little bit too early to tell, but to me, education will be the key uh, with, with our student athletes. Go right here in the middle. Is Ole Miss attitude and mindset for this upcoming season? You know what? I, I've, I've been really, really pleased with to, coming out of last season with all the positive momentum and going into the spring, you could really see the culture continue to build. I was really – when we ended the season last year, you could really tell how far we had come from a culture standpoint. And I think – what happened was I think all the things that th that group of young men had been through, it could do one of two things. It could either push you apart or bring you together. And I really think that everything that they've been through really brought them together as a team. So I think as a mind with their mindset of playing for each other, uh, they're getting up every morning right now at 6 o'clock, not at, but four days a week at 6 o'clock in the morning, and they're putting in the work, and uh, th they're attacking this season. And I, I really like the way they're working and like the culture in our locker room right now. We'll go to the camera position right here in the middle. Coach, how much more explosive can your offense be now that Phil Longo is entering his second year with your program? You know, I, I think I think continuity is huge. I think having you know, not only on offense but defensively, you know, coming back with the same system, I think they're all more comfortable with the offense. And then you can focus on the little things. You can focus on the techniques and maybe some of the different things that we can do off of some of our tendencies to change things up. So very excited. I thought Coach Longo did a phenomenal job, and we returned eight starters off an offense that was arguably one of the best in the conference. So. Very excited, and, and you know Jordan's growth will he'll only continue to get better. So, so I, I think um, I, I'm really excited about this year. Go to the right here in the middle and third row. Matt Jordan Tamu said he had no Division One offers coming out of high school. He had only a few to Division Two. He goes junior college. How did you find him? Who was the lead recruiter, and what led you to get him to? Um, get, I'll give some um, credit to Ben Agamoa. Um, he, he, I think they had some mutual uh, friends and acquaintances, maybe some family. Uh, but, but we did get him, uh, we got him on a visit, and I, I think it came down to us in Indiana maybe, but knew he was a talented runner 
and, and a good thrower. But, uh, but what you didn't know was his ability to lead the team. His first seven drives in SEC play were scoring drives. And I think he earned the respect of the team very, very quickly because I think, you know, everybody – puts their eyes on the quarterback, but he's a very quiet and unassuming kid, but his ability to, to, to be a leader and to go on a two-minute drive on the road in the SEC and win a game, I mean, I think that, uh, that, that showed a lot about who he was. Because uh, I think those are the questions you don't ever know until the, the live bullets start flying. And I think he exceeded everybody's expectations last year. I'll go right here on the back row. Hey, Coach, we're from Baton Rouge. And, uh, okay. We're at that LSU Ole Miss game last year, and Shea unfortunately got hurt. And when Jordan came in, everyone was like, wow, who's this guy? <laughs> right. Uh, can you just talk about the fact that he stepped in immediately and played the way he did in that game, and that just kind of sprung him forward? Yeah, you know what? I think a lot of, a lot of credit has to go to Phil Longo having, having your second guy around. A lot of people, when, when they lose their starting quarterback, there's a big drop off. But, but for us, it wasn't that. And I, I thought Jordan – uh, did a phenomenal job of leading the football team, but but I think a lot of credit has to go to Phil Longo with having having a guy ready. And there's going to be a similar challenge with a young quarterback in Matt Corral uh, this year. But I, I do have a lot of confidence that Phil can have him ready to go. Go to the back row on the left side over here. Coach, I'm, uh, I'm fascinated on how uh, this redshirt rule is going to affect the game and how each coach is going to use it differently. Um, we already have the acceleration of players getting to college and are so they're, they're ready faster, right? right. Um, how will you use it, and how do you think it'll most impact the game? Because even think about postseason with guys going on to the NFL, will you get your young guys some playing time? How will you use it, and will there be any strategy if you? Yeah, will? well, first I really like the rule. I like the flexibility that it gives us because I think when 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 young men enter your program, they enter at different stages. Some of them are ready to go, and you can put them in in the first four games to see if they're ready. Or some guy may develop later, maybe take him a little bit longer to get the system, and you could play him maybe at the end of the season. So I, I really like the flexibility that it provides for us and like the rule. Go over here on the second row. Hi, Coach. Right time. Hey. Chloe Reyes, News Watch Ole Miss. Uh, I know you talked a little bit about the running back position. You talked about balance on your team. One thing that was kind of missing, I guess, from last year's team was – was kind of that tight end production of Evan Ingram. What, can you talk a little bit about the tight end production of, of Knox and Cooley and how important they're going to yeah, be? Yeah, you know what, I think um, Dawson Knox is a, is a weapon. He is a uh, he's a tremendous young man. And I think when he came back from his foot injury, I think that that played a large part. Obviously, Jordan running the football, but but having a tight end that can stretch the field vertically and also block in the box. Um, you know, if you, if you go four wise to throw it and then bring in a tight end to run it, people know what you're going to do. But when you can have a guy like an Evan Ingram or like a Dawson Knox, uh, I think uh, it gives you um, – I think you're harder to prepare for. I think the defense doesn't know what's coming. And then to speak on Cooley, um, he had a phenomenal spring. Uh, Dawson was out a lot, so he got a bunch of reps and got a lot better. So I, I think there will be some times where we, you'll see both of those guys on the field at the same time and because they're both, both very athletic, both can uh, do some things in the run game and catch the ball in the pass game. So excited about that position. We'll go to the front row of the camera platform over here to the left. Coach, if you count your interim tag being removed, there's six new coaches this year in the league. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh because it's a lot. I'm uh, right. interested to see, and I know some of them, like Jimbo, used to be at LSU, and like you said, you're no stranger to the conference, and Dan Mullen going back to Florida. So it's not like it's a complete stranger, but I'm just wondering from your take how you think it changes the landscape just this year with all those new coaches, and then what would you do differently looking back in your little short time last year as the interim coach? Yeah, you know what, I, I think um, just, just on the SEC, it's, it's, it is um, – it is very, very pressure packed, and just with the way that everything is going and the, and the media coverage, everybody ex wants to win now. But that's also what makes the SEC very, very special. Uh, the, the, these college towns and their fans being so passionate about their schools—that that's what makes the SEC unique. So I think, I think when you you know what you're getting into when you sign up and you, and you and you embrace it. Uh, but I, you know, again, I said before that this head coaching job doesn't come with a handbook. So I think you learn a lot uh, moving forward. But uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed um, building relationships with the players, especially on defense. And uh, it's maybe not a regret, but maybe earlier in my career, I wouldn't have stayed so much in the offensive line, but, but really get out and get to know guys. Because that, that's the part of being a head coach that I uh, maybe enjoyed the most, is building those relationships with not only just one position room, but maybe everybody on the whole team. I really enjoyed that part. Go to the camera position right back here, far right. Coach, what have you seen from Jordan as he made the transition from <clears throat> mostly unknown backup looking for reps to the, the leader of a SEC program? 
you know what, I, I just with the way that he finished the season, it, it made that transition so much easier. And uh, now this is his team. He has a full um, spring, a full summer, a full off season uh, to develop that rapport with not only the receivers, but also to be the leader of, of that offense. And I think uh, obviously coming back in the same offense, second year under Coach Longo's offense, I think, um, I think he'll only get better. Go to the front row over here on the left. Matt, what kind of growth do you, have you seen out of um, DeMarcus Lodge and Greg Little over the last couple of years, and what do you expect out of them this year? Uh, have huge expectations for those. Both those guys are, are, are projected NFL players, and uh, really, really, it's been fun to watch those guys grow. Um, you know, you know, Greg. Uh, to speak on Greg, just to see him. To, to see the confidence he has now that he's been through two seasons. He's played against first-round draft picks. He knows exactly what to expect. And, um, you know, he's one of the premier offensive linemen in this country and uh, really excited. And, and to see him grow as a leader. And then, and then with DeMarcus Lodge, same thing, to see him grow as a freshman. Seems like he's been around for a long, long time. But it's been fun for me to watch the lineage of those receivers, starting with Dante Moncrief and Laquan Treadwell and Adeboyjo and Cody Core, and then their work ethic gets passed to A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf and DeMarcus Lodge. It's just fun to see that, that work ethic come to fruition, and they'll pass it down to, to the next group of freshmen. So I think that's a really cool thing. But DeMarcus Lodge, I'm expecting him to have a, a, a phenomenal year. Go to the front row of the camera position, over to the right. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good. And this is not a trick question. I'm just <laughs> going to say that right now. But you just heard the stat about the number of new coaches in the league, getting to know those new guys. When you were 16 years old, what was your dream car? <sighs> dream car. I, I probably just wanted a car. Uh, <laughs> it was the, the Honda Accord that I drove first, probably. Uh, but no, but dream car, I don't know, maybe uh, Ford F-150, maybe? We'll go over here to the left on the end. Yeah, Matt, in this day and age, how did Jordan go under-recruited like he did? You know what, I think being at um, – the way that recruiting speeds up, he was hurt a lot as a freshman in junior college. So I think he was a little bit of an unknown, had a really good second year in junior college. But I think him being maybe hurt that first year, uh, I think it was maybe a little bit of an of a unknown. But uh, I'm glad it worked out that way for us. Go back here to the camera position on the right side. Coach, beginning your career at Ole Miss as a grad assistant, you kind of touched on the journey earlier. Uh, could you have ever imagined in your wildest dreams that you would be the head coach of this football team at that point in time? Um, you know what, I think when I when – I, my last game, uh, I, played for, I played for Tommy Tuberville four years. Coach Cutcliffe coached my last game. And uh, I was going to go into um, – Go into. I was a business, had a business degree, and was going to go into business. And Coach Cutcliffe told me in, "Is hey man, why don't you come back and, and work as a student assistant next year?" And uh, ever since then, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And, and uh, I left and went to Murray State for a short time. But but coming back when Coach Cutcliffe hired me back to Ole Miss, um, you know, I, I always knew and, and tried to learn as much as I could and soak in as much as I could from the people I was around uh, to prepare to one day. Um, be a, be a head coach, um, and then I think it's a bonus when it's at when it's at Ole Miss because of uh, obviously my family history. We'll go over here to the right on the second row. Freddie Roach is your linebackers coach. It's a guy that I'm very familiar with. Talk about him, and he's got a couple guys who he's going to be having to work with a little bit more extensively this year. Uh, just talk about the job that he's done since he's been at Ole Miss. Yeah, so so if Freddie coaches our defensive line. He he, he yeah he he is a um, he is a tremendous. Um, Tremendous technician, but the thing he does really, really well is he has great relationships with his players. His players trust him. They know that he cares about them, and uh, I, I think that's a great um, that's a great thing for a coach to have because if a player knows that you care about him and he's a good guy, he can push you very, very hard. And I think that's what's really f special about Freddie is not only is he a great technician, but he's also a guy that's uh, that's been there and done it, and he know the players know when he talks to them that that he's helping them. Got time for just a couple more. If you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Anything else for Coach? All right, thank you. Oh, one more over here on the left. Yeah. Matt, we hear coaches talk about eliminating the external noise and stuff. With, you don't have to worry about, hey, guys, don't look at bowl projections this year. Don't look at playoff rankings. Does it, obviously, you want to compete for championships, but in a way, does it make it easier to keep your guys focused on the short-term goals 
hey, beat Texas Tech, then we'll measure it, and then here's your goal for seven days from now. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if it makes it any easier, but I, I think you all have unique challenges with social media, and they're all on their phone. So, so we all have those unique challenges. But I, I think that the teams that are good are the teams that continue to improve over the course of the season that can stay focused on the task at hand. And, uh, you know, I said before, really like the culture of this football team and, and the way this team has come together.